Anderson Family. Can you imagine this J.J. Tuttle trying to sell me a third interest in his book, My Life in the Sudan? Why, Oliver, <laughs> you talk as though his book isn't any good. Just this afternoon, you told him it sounded great. I told him that just to get rid of it. Oh, then you think the book's no good? Of course not. Tuttle's never been further than Long Beach. Well, I wouldn't put a dime in it. Homer Meister did. Well, what would you expect? Of course he did. Well, then you can prepare yourself for a shock. A shock? Yes. You seem so interested in the deal that uh, I paid Mr. Tuttle $150 for a share. Uh, $150? Where did you get it? Out of the cash box. Out of the cash box? That wasn't my money. That belongs to the boss. Uh-oh, here we go again, folks. <laughs> And now let's visit the Anderson family. Well, this whole thing started when J.J. Tuttle, the gentleman who lives next door to the Andersons, wrote a travel book called My Life in the Sudan. All Tuttle needs is some money to have it printed. The first that Oliver Anderson knew about the book was while the family was eating dinner. Did you tell Pop about Mr. Tuttle's book, Mom? Not yet, dear. What book is this? Oh, Mr. Tuttle's written a book about his travels in the jungles. He thinks it'll be a bestseller. He told Mom and me some of the stuff he's going to have in it. Oh, it's sure swell, Pop. You mean he wrote a book? Yes, he did. 160 pages, all about tiger hunting and, oh, lots of interesting things. <laughs> I thought he was going to go to work. Why, Oliver Anderson, don't you think it's work writing a whole book? Oh. I should think you'd try to help him. After all, there's a lot of money in books, you know. All right, he's written a book. Get your sleeve out of the potatoes, Junior. He's willing to share his good fortune with others, too. That's a good trait in anyone. Well, I didn't say it wasn't. He wants to see you, too, Pop, after you eat. Well, I don't know anything about books. Bread, Junior. Yeah, but... sure. Uh, he's waiting for you to come over, Oliver. I told him you would. Okay, but I don't know how I could help him. Can I go, too, Pop? No, you'd better stay home, Junior. Oh. I think Mr. Tuttle wants to talk business with your father. Great Scott's hot now. Yes, what is it? Never mind, it's just Anderson. My, my, step right in. Well, why don't you identify yourself, my dear fellow? Why, were you expecting the cops? Cops? Uh, <clears throat> uh, what made you mention the uh, constabulary? Oh, just kidding. Huh? Hi, Homer. Hi, hi, Oliver. Uh, Tuttle, Mary said you wanted to see me. Yes, yes, I did. Oliver, I've the greatest book which has hit the publishing field for many a year. Have I read it? Well, uh, uh, no, not yet. Oh. You see, we, we have to be mighty careful who we let in on it. And the first one we thought of was you. Yep. Is this going to cost me something? <laughs> like I told Mary this afternoon, a man with your wonderful sense of humor will go far. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> lock the door there, Homer. I don't want a word of this to leak out. Yep, yep, well, we'll maybe if it's a secret, I shouldn't listen. <laughs> Come now. Uh, let's get to the business at hand. <clears throat> Homer, were you successful? Uh, here, Homer, sit down in my chair. Uh, no, 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 thanks, Oliver. I'm going to stand. Uh, well, Tuttle, I, I hate to say it, but I didn't make it. Uh, Marthy's got a new lock on the trunk. A new yeah. lock? Yep. You don't mean you're moving out, Homer. Uh, quiet, please. <laughs> Homer, you told me expressly that you could obtain the $200 on a moment's notice. Well, uh... Yes, so I saved you a fourth interest in my book. My life in the Sudan. $200? That's silly. Well, I can buy any book for a dollar and have no worries. Oh, uh, please, Anderson. Just a moment. Well, a stupid $200. Homer, this is a fine state of affairs. After I've made arrangements for <coughs> you and the photographs and all. Oh, well, Homer doesn't take a very good picture anyhow. Oh, well, I've I done the best I could, Tuttle. Uh, look, what maybe is... I just better run on home. No, I... no, please, Anderson. This is most important. Oh, well. Now, Homer, I've made concessions in your favor. I made arrangements for your picture to be taken with my old squirrel gun. Oh, me. Yes, yes, that, of course, goes on page two of the autobiography. Well, yes. just how is that going to help Homer, Tuttle? Help him? Great Scott, he can send an autographed copy to the mayor of North Platte. Yeah, well, maybe the mayor can't read. Oh, he can, too. He can read as good as I can. <laughs> yeah, right nice fellow. Uh, you say I get my picture in the front? Oh, 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 oh me. Uh, how big a picture? Uh, well, now, wait, Homer. You only got half a page, you know. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. half a page. For uh, 200, that's a fair deal. Yeah, I'd take yeah. it myself, Homer, if I had 200. <laughs> I have also arranged a native costume. 
with rifle. And you pose with a full-grown tiger. Oh. Is the tiger tame? We take the picture at the zoo. <laughs> yep, yep. And of course, Homer is outside the cage. <laughs> they take the bars right yeah. out of the overgraft. Gee, you know? Homer, for 300, you can get right in and ride the tiger. Well, it's a mighty interesting deal, oh, uh, Tuttle. Homer. Uh, and as soon as Marthy goes downtown, uh, I'll get the 200 out the trunk. Yep. Yep. That's the way Homer is, Tuttle. Yep. If he wants a thing, he spends. Of course, if Homer can obtain, <clears throat> say, an additional 100, I uh, might uh, see fit to enlarge the picture. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> instead of it, uh, the title being My Life in the Sedan, you could call it Our Lives in the Sedan. Ah, oh, yes. This is I see financial security <laughs> ahead for you and for me, Homer. Just think of the millionaires today who would still be riveting or welding doing common laboring chores, if they hadn't taken a chance on a good thing. Oh, there's no question about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I hope everything comes out all right. Well, I made rough over with Tuttle. You coming over soon? Oh, maybe an hour or two. Oh, <laughs> me. Antoinette down at the Jam Cafe said they was having corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> Evening, partner. Oh, hi, Denton. Just getting home? Uh, yep. How's the missus? Well, she's feeling a mite better. Been laid up for a couple of weeks. Kind of off her feet, I guess. Hmm. Had to have the vet for her last night. Gee, that's tough. I guess she got hold of some bum pretzels. <laughs> well, I guess a person has to be careful. Say, uh, who's this stranger that moved in Meister's garage? Oh, you mean J.J. Tuttle? Yeah. Big yeah. fella, white yeah. spats, yeah. gray vest, and a dirty? Yeah, yeah that, that's the farmer. Thought he was with a medicine show. No, 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 no. He writes books. You don't say. Yeah, got one ready for the publisher right now called My Life in the Sudan. You don't say. About time somebody wrote about the housing shortage. No, no, no. It's Sudan, not Sedan. You know, you know, I kind of like a place where I can stretch my legs no, a look, bit. Now, look, you don't get it. It's a hunting story, hunting about tigers, jungles and stuff. He expects to clean up with it. Yeah, that's the way with them fellers. Selfish-like. Make all the money themselves and keep it. Oh, oh no, he's not that way. Huh? Homer Meister just bought a third interest in the book for 150. Well, now, it's that good, eh? I don't know. I haven't read it yet. You know, I always wanted to get mixed up in something artistic like that. Hmm? You, do, you, do you reckon he'd let me in on well, it? You could ask him. Well, I don't know the man. Now. Just, just I, look, just tell him you know me. It'll be all right. You don't? Well, do tell. You know, it's right nice of you to steer me onto this thing, Anderson. I won't forget it. You know, I may be able to do something for you someday myself. Always glad to help a neighbor, Denton. Well, I sure hope this thing turns out good, Anderson. Last investment I made, I ended up broke. And the other varmint ended up in Boot Hill. That you, Oliver? Yeah, why? Mr. Chapman's here. Oh, swell. Well, I'll, uh, look, I'll show you where the pipe leaks, Chapman. It's the first chance I got to get over, Anderson. You know how plumbing is these days. Yeah, I know. Plumbing's high. Hey, you ain't kidding. Well, let's get at it. Yeah, I have some company coming over in a few minutes. Company, Oliver? Yeah, Tuttle's going to run over his book for us. Ah, Tuttle. That's a fellow who sold me an interest in blister fix. That's the guy living in with the Meister automobile, eh? Uh, no, that is now called the guest house. Come on, I'll show you the pipe. Yeah. Say, what's this book he's going to run over with you? Oh, it's a book he has ready for the publisher. Homer Meister bought into it, and Denton's going to buy into it too, I guess. Jay, is it that good? It looks like it. I haven't read it yet. Uh, uh, all right, here's the pipe. Yeah. Yeah, that ain't no pipe leaking. You just need a washer in that faucet, so. See, I'm getting off cheap then, ain't I? How much is a washer? A nickel. A nickel? Yeah, Ooh. 350 service charge, oh. 355 altogether. Uh, Say, you uh, say this guy's got something good, eh? Yeah, I guess so. But you wouldn't be interested in books. What do you mean I ain't interested in books? Well, I spend half my evenings reading Superman and Batman with Butch. Well, look, this is a different type. Uh, any pictures in it? I suppose so, but you wouldn't be interested. Now, wait a minute here, Anderson. You mean I ain't got with culture? I didn't say that. Then why don't you want me to buy a share? I don't care if you do or you don't. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I can read. I know you can. And can't. I got the dough. Then why don't you talk to Tuttle? I will. I got the same right as anybody else to make a buck. Well, of course you have. And I'd like to see this Tuttle guy try to keep me up. I don't think he will. My dough's as good as yours. Uh, look, look, Chapman. Don't yeah. get pushy here. I don't care what you do with your money. What's going on out here? Nothing. Mr. Chapman's just leaving. Yeah, yeah. But face, give me $4.75. Four? I didn't know you owed Mr. Chapman anything, Oliver. I don't. 
Look, I thought you said the bill would be three fifty-five. It would, but you got me in this argument, and I ain't arguing with nobody on my own time. You know, Mary, I'm sorry we got mixed up in this book business. If anything happened that wasn't any good, I'd have to leave town. Oh, don't be silly, Oliver. I understand Mr. Denton bought a share. And it looks as though Chapman wants a piece of it. But the book's bound to be a success, Oliver. Mr. Tuttle said so. Oh, mm. here he is now. Please, Oliver, don't embarrass the poor fellow. Be kind to him now. I'll try. Oh, good evening, Mr. Tuttle. Come in. Thank you, my dear. My, my, how lovely you look this evening. Oh. The bloom of an orchid on your cheek. Oh, oh thanks. Oh, Homer came with you. Howdy, howdy, Mary. Yep, yep, just thought I'd hear him go over it once more. You know, I'm kind of confused in a couple of places. Oliver's right in here, Mr. Tuttle. Just put your hat on the table there. Thank you, my dear. Ah, uh, me such fine hospitality. Uh, look, look, Tuttle, yes. I have a lot of stuff to do here. Tish, tush. Now, Anderson, I want you to be the first to hear the book, even before the publisher reads it. My Is uh, this enough light, Mr. Tuttle? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Uh, may I have a glass of water, Mary? Water? Yes. Oh, of course, I won't be but a second. You don't feel faint, do you, Tuttle? Uh, no, but of course, it's a certain strain. You mean you read the book under a doctor's care or something? The water, my friend, is to moisten me lips. Oh, yeah. Here you are, Mr. Tuttle. Ah, uh, thank you. Now, if we'll have it quiet, please. Uh, now, let's see. You know the title, of course. My Life in the Sudan. Uh, look, it's late. Let's get to the meat of the thing. Uh, meat? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Are you ready? <clears throat> ready? You're going to read it or time it? Quiet. Now, opus. Opus? Uh, uh, merely a publishing term, my dear. <clears throat> Page one, chapter one. First edition, first printing. This book in its entirety is covered by copyright. Look, look, Tuttle, get on with the story. Is that you, Junior? Yeah, I just want to hear the book. Oh, that's all right. Just keep real quiet now, dear. Uh, now, now, here we go. A tropical sun burning and scorching the very terrain upon which you stand. And in the distance, the warm glow of campfires. Fires during the heat? No, it doesn't make sense. Uh, oh, yes, yes, I see what you mean. Well, perhaps I could just cut out about the campfires. <laughs> Please, Junior, quiet or leave the room. <clears throat> The savage breast of Bolo, my gun bearer, heaved under his heavy load as under a full moon, we start our trek into the dangerous jungle. Moonlight, sun, campfires, what is it? Uh, I'll, uh, perhaps I'll change that a little. <clears throat> but what about the tigers, Mr. Tuttle? No, Junior. Junior quick. Great Scott, a fellow can't get started on it. Now, uh, I don't mind constructive criticism. Okay, I'll make notes as we go. Maybe we can dense it to about three pages. <sighs> oh, look at that. Junior, is that you? No, no, not me. It's Mr. Meister. Oh, great Scott. I've never been so humiliated in my life. Take it easy, Tuttle. Mr. Tuttle, you're bending the And pages. I shall bend them all. Great Scott, I shall take the story where people appreciate real literature. If you do, you'll be misunderstood. Homer, Homer, wake up. Poor Homer. Sound asleep. Come on, come on. Uh, uh, what? Um, oh, doggone it. Must have dozed off. Yes, yes, come, come. come. We're, we're leaving, Homer. I've never been so humiliated in my life. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Tuttle. Oh, he's the temperamental type, Mary. He's going to be all right. Saves time anyhow this way. Well, there goes the author. I knew I should have read the thing before I talked about it. Oh, but Oliver... But I thought it was funny, Pa. Gee, I could have listened all night. It may be funny to you, Junior, but I'll bet Denton and Chapman aren't laughing. After all, they have money in it. Oh, no. You don't think they'll lose it. It's not my lookout. Oh, but Oliver, it is. How do you mean? Because we have 150 in it, too. We have? Where did you get $150? In the cash box. Oh, brother, that wasn't my money. It belonged to the boss. And now back to the Anderson family. Well, J.J. Tuttle has been talking to Oliver about a book he has written called My Life in the Sudan. Oliver talked about the book to several friends and found out that they bought an interest in the book. This in itself would have been bad enough, but to top it all off, he discovered Tuttle had talked Mary into a share of the book, and she'd paid for it with money which belongs to the boss. Oliver now is struggling for a way out. Now, you see, Mary, if you just talked to me, we could have stopped all this. 
I won't even dare go out of the house now. But you had nothing to do with these other people buying a part of it, Oliver. Yeah, but they think I did. Why, that book isn't even an article. It's just rubbish, but Tommy rot, blunder talk. It's sure funny, Pop. Oh, it isn't supposed fine. to be funny, Junior. Well, it would be funny if you hadn't put my $150 into it. Now, now, how do I pay the boss? I think you're taking it too seriously, Oliver. You think so, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm, this doesn't sound so good. Just take it easy, Senator. Oh, Mr. Denton. Good evening, ma'am. Is your, your man to home? Why, uh, yes. Won't you come in? Uh, uh, thanks. Mr. Anderson is in here. It's uh, just a little business matter, ma'am. Oh, oh hi, hi. good evening, Mr. Denton. Uh, well, sit down. Uh, no, no thanks, partner. It's all the same to you. I'll just stand this one out. Well, suit yourself. Uh, what's become of that hombre next door, uh, Rattled his doorknob, and nobody answered. Looks like he's gone over the hill. Mr. Tuttle gone? Yep. He's saddled up, I reckon. Oh, no, I don't think so. Well, of course, I know my money's safe. As long as Anderson's got anything to do with it. Oh, 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 oh sure, 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 uh, of course. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I, I thought I'd drop in and pick up my investment. I, Understand you're in the firm, too. Uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, I am, but uh, I'm not cashier. Oh. Oh, you ain't it. No. Well, all I can say is this. Some varmint is going to get dry gulched in this neighborhood if I don't see my money by tomorrow's sundown. Oh, oh well, I'm sure you won't lose anything, Mr. Denton. Well, I'm glad to hear that, lady. I'm not aiming to have no trouble. All I want is my money back. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see Tuttle. I... I just want my money. And by tomorrow's sundown. Huh, fine mess. I'm not going to be stuck with this thing. Well, uh, maybe you could sell it to someone, Oliver. Are you kidding? Well, Junior liked it. <laughs> maybe it would make a good children's book. Yeah, but it made him laugh. Hmm, all the better. That might be a funny book for kids. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe you've got something there. Yeah. I know Peterson down at the publishing house. Oh, say, maybe this is Tuttle. Oh, I'll get it. Anderson speaking. Anderson, this is Chapman. Oh. And look here, I got dough in that book, see? And I can't find his punk Tuttle. Well, that's not my fault, is it? Yeah, you talked me into this deal, didn't you? Why, no, I, I just told you, you told I... told me no such thing, and get this, Anderson. I'm collecting that 200 before Saturday, or there's going to be something mighty unpleasant happen on this street. Uh, you'll get your money. Now, just calm down, Chapman. That's what I want to hear. I'm glad I got that all straightened out. Uh, yeah, it, it's all straight. Uh, goodbye. Chapman? Yeah. Mm. Blowing a valve, too. Oh. I knew we shouldn't have been mixed up in this thing, Mary. Uh, but Mr. Tuttle sounded so earnest, Yeah, darling. so did Chapman. Now all I have to do is sell the book. <laughs> Oh, boy in the flesh, Mary. Look, money, 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 lots of it. Why, Oliver, where did you get it? Oh, that seven hundred dollars. how did you, I mean, well... Well, wait, Peterson you... thought it was the funniest kid's book he'd ever read. Said he'd give me seven hundred now and more if they sold a second printing. But, oh, have you told Tuttle yet? Well, he's not over there. Neither is Homer. And Martha won't even speak to me. Well, well, at least you can give these people their money back. Oh, That Oliver. is the first thing I'm going to do. And from now on, when Tuttle mentions anything about investments... Say no automatically, mm. do you hear? Oh, say, maybe this is Tuttle now. Yeah, well, maybe. Oh, Mr. Chapman, won't you come in? Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks, Mrs. Anderson. Uh, say, would you leave the house for a few minutes, please? Leave the house? Yeah, yeah, I, I got words with Anderson. I've been waiting for three hours for him to show up. Well, well he's right in here. Mr. Anderson will talk to you. Oh, oh, yeah, here you are. Hi, Chapman, sit down. Hey. I don't want no hospitality, though, from you, Anderson. Huh? I just want 200 bucks, and in currency of the U.S. 200? Okay, my friend. Wait a minute. Okay? Yeah. Uh, you mean you got it? Yes, sir, of course I have. <laughs> well, this is indeed a pleasant surprise. Wait till I tell the boys. <laughs> Huh? Who is it? Hey, 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 it's Homer. 
You know, I've been hiding in them darn bushes for three hours, got all caught up there and everything. I've been afraid to come out. Well, you'll be glad to hear that I collected something on the book. Oh, you mean you sold it? Yes, sir, I sold it. But mm. it isn't my life in the Sudan anymore. Uh, well, a rose by any other name. Uh, you, you got the money? Yes, sir, got the money. Oh, boy, oh, boy, I don't know how glad I am. Oh, boy, oh, boy. How much did you have in it? Well, let's see now. A uh, hundred dollars in money, and, and I better get it back, too. hundred dollars, huh? Yeah. And, and then, of course, he, he, he's been living in my garage, and, and then outside of that, of course, it'd be kind of nice if I had to get a little profit out of it. Profit you know? nothing. You're yeah. going to be disappointed. I just got your money back. Oh, oh, you did, eh? Yeah, look, and by yeah. the way, where is this tupper? Uh, I, I, I can't tell you. Can't tell me? You don't know? Uh, yep. Well, uh, come on. Uh, well, we, uh, uh... We? Uh, well, well, well uh, no, I can't tell you. Oh, yeah, can't I, tell me, huh? I, I can get him, though, if, if everything's all right. Why don't you go to bed, Oliver? You're worn out. Oh, I'm waiting for someone. Waiting for someone? Yep. Homer's gone out to dig Tuttle up and send him over. Yeah. Oh, now, wait, Oliver. The poor fellow's had enough trouble already. I'm not going to cause him any trouble, but I'll certainly mention that we're not interested in any more of his phony deals. Oh, this must be Tuttle now. I hope so. Don't make things any worse for him, dear. I'll wind him up like a clock. Come in, Mr. Tuttle. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Anderson. Your kindness is gratifying in the extremity. Why, Mr. Tuttle... Oh, you look ill. Uh, ah, me. How does your good husband feel about it? Well, I, I, I'm sure I can't say. Well, 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 Tuttle. Come on in, partner. Sit down. Yes, yes. Homer told me all about it. Oh, he did, huh? I want to shake your hand, Anderson. Yeah, never, never mind that. Now, look. Where's the money you got from these people? It's gone, Oliver. Gone? Yes, we thought perhaps that Homer and I could augment the sum collected, but Homer picked the wrong goat. A fine thing. Horse race betting. A fi and you took tips from that character, Homer? Well, look, Tuttle, just for your information, I paid off the people and kept us both out of jail. Anderson, I'll never forget this. Your kindness, your interest in me welfare. It touches me to the very core of me being. Yeah, very touching. But look, now, wait a minute. I paid everyone. I have my own money back, and here. Here's $50 left over. $50? That's right. I mean, uh, in cash? Yes, sir. I got $700 for the book. $700 for a bestseller? Well... Great Scott Henderson, why do you constantly interfere in me transaction? But, but Mr. Tuttle, we couldn't find you. And I'm not going to crawl under automobiles to dig you out. Automobiles? Yes, automobiles. Look at your cobwebs on your coat, grease spot on your vest. Look at your knees. Very well, I accept defeat. I shall take this paltry pittance. Paltry pittance. And start anew, looking forward to even greater triumphs. Oh, hi, and Mr. I... Tuttle. Uh, ah, me. Youth. What a wonderful thing. Yeah. Um... Ah, me. It takes me back to me childhood. Yeah, look, look, Tuttle. Look, it's late and now. My I'm... dear old mother, oh. looking down at me. With tears in her Wait eyes. Wait a minute, Tuttle. Let's not go into that. Let's close the whole deal here and now. And listen, leave me out of any further deals you may have. I will respect your wishes, Oliver and oh, That's fine. Ah, me. Now I shall have to start with $50 and run me remedy <clears throat> youth back into thousands. Then I hope to repay you for your kindness. Youth back? Youth back, huh? What's that? Uh, merely a little remedy I perfected for people of 60 or over. Put spring in their steps, sparkle in their eyes. And when the nation learns of me discovery... Mm, how do you handle it? Oliver? Uh, 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 Bernie, Bernie. Well, I just asked is all. And when preparations are made, I shall contact you, Anderson. And perhaps from the embers of sordid defeat, we may fan the flame to the very pinnacle of success. Well, Gee, Pop! Wait a minute. Never interrupt when people are talking now about this youth back there. Oliver, it's late. Of course, I... It doesn't hurt to listen, does it? I know just what'll happen if you listen. Um, yes, I remember well, once... Well, a fella can ask questions, can't he? Of course, but we're not going to get into I anything else. Oh, you... You're, you're always... Uh-oh! Here we go! Again, 
Anderson Family is written by Howard Swart, directed by Herb Litton, and features Dick Lane as Oliver, Louise Arthur as Mary, Walter Tetley as Junior, and Herbert Rollinson as Homer. Others in the cast were Doug Young and Ray Erlenborn. Music by Gordon Kibbe, and your announcer is Ken Peters. The Anderson Family is a Hollywood Broadcasters production, transcribed from Hollywood. Hollywood.